good morning welcome to my channel i hope you're all well today i've come into yorkshire up to the yorkshire photography high based around bradford and leeds just off the m62 run by a guy called mick who's very knowledgeable works hard on it and knows what he's talking about what we might expect to see here are kestrels jays and some bramblings about still you know all your blue tits great tits and etc the odd tree creeper when they turn up things like that well i've been here about a quarter of an hour uh mick left a quarter of an hour ago and as soon as he was gone in his car kestrel was in so i've just taken a load of a uh, load of uh, photos of that and some video footage as well having a look see if anything's about got a bit of a break Right, well, yes, uh, it's a lovely shed. It's been kitted out quite well. Uh, in the colder months, he's got a heater at the back here. A couple of seats. It's normally two people in these at a time. Well, I'm having it for the whole afternoon. Nice sturdy bench. I could have bought my little mini tripod and put it on here, actually. Uh, but there's also some bean bags. But I suggest you bring some of your own because it's, it's only got about two or one. It's a bit difficult. So I bought my own, and that's that. At the back of me, I've got a stash of uh, mice uh, to put up, which uh, the kestrels come to eat. And I'm looking at it, I think he's already polished one off. Might do, I think I can still see a bit of its body on there. But a couple of crows came careering in, and it wasn't best pleased with that, so it sort of like just took off. So where it's gone, I don't know, it's gone over to the right of me. It came in from the left. In fact, I think I can see it now. It's gone to perch in the trees. I think it was the male. Normally, the, the female will come in and just stay around, but just enough to eat something. Mick thinks they're, they're on eggs. She's on eggs. So it could be that if the male comes, he'll eat what he has to eat, usually a, a top half of its body, straight, straight into the brain or wherever. And if he can, he'll, he'll rip it out and take it back back to the nest and uh, feed it to his to his missus as it were so yeah I'll give you a look of how everything looks outside just bear with me a moment there are perches everywhere there's, there's one on the extreme right and then as we start to pan we can get some more in there's a post there's some logs a bit of a pond and there are two, a telegraph pole, an old trunk, and a knocked up perch. Then we come swinging round to the left. There's two more perches, some stones sticking out, some sort of like dry wall. And then over to the extreme left, there's another large uh, trunk sticking out the ground. And there's uh, another area with some grass turf laid on the top with some um, old dry stones. So there's lots of things about that you can get you know, a decent image of and to make it look as natural as possible. But yeah, I've only been here half hour and I would say it's paid for my day already. So I'm hoping that I might be able to get some flight shots of the, uh, the kestrel as well. So that's something I need to practice quite a lot. But we're waiting for the small stuff as well. Ideally, I think, size lens that you need is at least a 300. 400 preferably. 500 might do you so well. So, and that's what I bought, a 300 and a 500. Z9 is on the 300. My D850 is on the 500. And we have a black cap. No, we don't. We have a red. Right, so I'm going to spend a bit more time having a look around, see what's happening. So I'll see you soon. So this is the outside of it, chemical toilet there. The 
pretty much fenced off so the birds don't see you actually get out here when you need to go to the toilet. We're having a bit of a quiet moment at the moment. The kestrel has flown off. Some of the smaller birds are starting to come in. <coughs> We've got chaffinch, goldfinch, <coughs> blue tits. A jay came swooping in, but I wasn't quick enough or to mark to get that. There's some alpacas in the field as well, over there. Well, because there is a, an al alpaca experience uh, business here as well. So, you know, you can go and walk with alpacas if you like. I can hear the jingle of gold pinches somewhere, so they're around. Keep my eye out for the J later as well. Kestrel hopefully will come back. It demolished the, the first uh, mouse that we put out, and um, <coughs> I just put, put one out on the dry stone wall to see if it comes to that. My uh, Z9's trained on it. At this point, a 300 mil is, is ample for the kestrel. 500 I'm using for the smaller birds. And even then, the 300 will be fine on some of the closer perches as well. But I'll pull a bit more seed out. I'm just waiting to see what happens. The windows are covered in scrim net, uh, which, although you can look at it, just it just makes things a little bit difficult to spot the tinier birds. No problem with a kestrel. You can see that quite quite good through this. But I'm, I'm probably missing a few smaller birds on the left of me because of that and I've been trying to position the camera so I can like get a bit of a peek without showing myself up. For anyone starting out with photography, bird photography, uh, a place like this is ideal for them because basically because everything's baited as it were you know there's food put out for various different kinds of birds it it's good for your own practice sort of like trying out your new camera or whatever getting used to sort of like focusing quickly and you know setting up your camera with with uh, shutter speed against the uh, aperture against iso things are beginning to warm up a bit now so I shall speak to you later. What a kestrel's been again. I'm, I've got another quiet moment at the moment. So, I'll tell you a little bit more about... Um, Yorkshire Photography Hides. As I said earlier, the guy runs it, his name is Mick. Um, he has a Facebook page and a web page. I'll, I'll put them in the description at the bottom. So, this hide that we're in at the moment is called Charlie's Hide. Not quite sure who Charlie is, but yes. Uh, he runs two other hides now. Um, there's one that's called Nigel's Nook which I went to last year, it was really good. Uh, that's a little bit further away from where we are at the moment, but uh, he takes you up to the door anyway, so. <coughs> yeah, that's that's more like a, 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 a bit of a wooded area, uh, but there's a clearing in this wooded area. It still gets the sun quite well throughout the day. And uh, up there you have all your usual woodland birds, um, lots of old finches, Green finches, gold finches, chaffinches, coltits, things like that. But the star of show there is the sparrowhawk. Now, there is a male and female that go to that place. Uh, but last year, all we had was the female. And she's big. She she spent a lot of time there. Uh, a bit pinicky, uh, 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 by all accounts, about what food she eats. Uh, put all sorts of that. But uh, one thing she does like is quail. So... It's got expensive tastes. Yes, but um, that's a pretty decent hide. The, the other one I've not been to, he's only just got it up and running, called the Willow. And uh, not sure where that is here, but they're all around the same place. And uh, I don't know what kind of hide that is. The hide at, at Nigel's Nook is basically like this again, a shed, uh, kitted out with um, 
all the food that you need and that and there is a heater in there too uh, maybe I'll visit that again and do a more in-depth uh, look and review of it but yes so Willow Hyde is one I'm perhaps going to be interested in later on in the year uh, see what that's like then so if I have to go again I'll uh, I'll do another video give a bit of a thumbs up and, and a review on what it's like so I've just been out to uh, put the mouse on the telegraph pole see if I can get the kestrel to stay on that it, it did come to that in that last session but it was it, there was no mouse there so and it flew onto the onto the dry stone wall and uh, tearing away at it there before it decided to take what was left back to the missus as it were I keep seeing a, a wren keep popping up it just sort of like comes out has a bit of a look around and darts back in so yeah, I have to be very quick on that uh, so, so I'm pretty sure I saw brambling in the trees over on the left but I've not had it come to the hide anywhere near to actually get that and it would be nice to get a brambling I've never ever had a photograph of a brambling so let's see what happens there it went a bit dull and now it's a little bit brighter at the moment you know, the, the cloud is now high and it diffused sunlight coming down so yes here we are at 20 past two I've still perhaps got about another four three or four hours to go but you can actually hire the hide you can hire the hide for the whole day uh, if you want whether it's just one of you or as a group of two which um, I think he does with all the other hides, certainly on the Nigel Nut one. And uh, yes, chaffinch is a great, great tip. So, let me get some more photos taken. See you in a bit. Just had another two sessions with the kestrel, the male again. This time I've put uh, a mouse on the very nearest sort of like gatepost, old gatepost, which is what about four or five meters away from me, if that. What he tends to do, and he's done this twice, is he's come onto the little telegraph pole, has a good look around, you know, such as a place there, and then he drops and flies too this old gate post and uh, has a pluck at the mouse but he doesn't seem to be wanting to hang around there you know, so if, if he can't get it ripped up and he didn't like it he's off but I think on the second he might have seen the movement of my lens uh, but I was like you know trying to track it get a, get a couple of shots in flight I think I've managed to get two or three out of a couple of bursts of 20, 20 frames per second so let's just see if they come out I mean I wear glasses so on the back of me LCD you know get, I can't tell if they're sharp enough or what that's the sort of thing uh, I have to rely on judgment at home so anyway yeah we're getting into the latter portion of the uh, afternoon it's now coming up to four o'clock. I want to give it maybe another hour and, and then I'll be off because I've, I've got plenty to go through now. I mean, generally, when I come out to places like this, and you, know, you rattle off hundreds, hundreds of hundreds of shots. But I must have between two cameras about five or six hundred. So <clears throat> I'll perhaps uh, do a video on how you deal with uh, mass collections of. Uh, of shots in an outing you know so how do I call them first and you know, then, then sort of like begin to sort of like meticulously call them so I'm gonna finish off this little session another hour I may come back to you see what's been happening so see you in a bit